When I started actively coding, I'll tell my mom, I usually tell my mom that I'm going to work very hard after school so that I can work for like five years before Microsoft can employ me as an engineer. And God willing, it came literally before I was even done with school, right? I, yeah. I think one of the things that stood out for me was your dream. Like right from when you were young, you just said, I want to work at Microsoft. It's so good for like a young person to be able to dream, you know, dream outside your in, like your immediate environment. And for you, you're just like, I want to work at Microsoft and everything just aligned. work together to get yeah. you exactly yeah. aligned, to get you at yeah. Microsoft. So the way it was that the whole, yeah, computer, <laughs> CPU, keyboard, yeah. Honestly, a lot. And the first thing for me will be dream as big as you can. Like dream as big as you can. My name is Esther Adibayo and on my tech journey with Esther, I sit down with tech folks to talk about how they've been able to handle rejections, overcome obstacles in their careers, and really cut through the hype. From coding mistakes to battling rejections, to balancing work life, and even doing phenomenal things, my guests will share everything raw and real on my tech journey with Esther. New episodes drop every week, so you don't want to miss out. Hi, hi, Chisum. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. It's, Thank you. Yeah, it's good to have you on the show. Um, I've been a silent observer of your work, and I have to say that you're doing really well. So okay. it's good to really have you here. Thank you. We really appreciate it. All right. So you're welcome. Before we dive into today's conversation, yeah. I always like to play a fun game with my guests. So. <laughs> I want to put you on the spot and um, yeah, so okay. I'd like you to mention six animals that start with the letter C. Cat. Yeah, that's <laughs> one. Cheetah. Okay. So. Chameleon. Yeah, three. Catfish. <laughs> <laughs> That's fish. <laughs> yeah, that 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 works. That's four. Um. Uh, I mean, my name starts with C. How does I know three? Three? Did you say three or six? Six. So two oh. more. Okay, two more. Um. Camel. There are two very yeah. Okay, one one more. So there's one very popular one. Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Chicken uh, and cow. Cow and chicken, yeah. I was thinking of the animals that I've never seen before. <laughs> yeah, no worries. But you did really well for someone that was put on the spot. That's that's cool. Okay. So um I know a lot of people know you as the tech queen, Chisum, but I'd like you to introduce yourself to those listening and watching. Oh, Tell okay. us more about your background, growing up. Yeah, let's meet you. Um so my name is Chisong. Once again, I consider myself a couple of things because I do a lot of things yeah. at the moment. Um, firstly, officially, I, I'm a software engineer. I do a lot of things around big data engineering and sustainability as well in the tech industry. <clears throat> I work for the sustainability team at Microsoft. And what I do is I help Microsoft um, you know, release sustainability, sustainable features on the Windows OS and also help them track okay. option for those features on the Windows OS. Um, aside from work, I'm involved in a couple of other things. I am an author. I published my first book in 2021, 2022. And that book is currently helping people land engineering jobs at international tech firms, which is something I'm really proud of. Um, I awesome. also have a YouTube channel where I share my life as a female software engineer, how I talk about like how I'm navigating my career and also my 20s and tech tips and tricks as well. And lastly, I am a public speaker. I love speaking. I love sharing my knowledge with people and I love, you know, interacting with people in the ecosystem. 
Awesome. That's such a robust intro. Yeah. You're doing so many things oh. and you're doing them so oh. well. So oh. it's good to, you know, have you just yeah. share your story so that others can learn as well. Exactly. You mentioned that you work as a software engineer at Microsoft. Yeah. So, and when we talk about Microsoft, that's one of the big tech companies talking about yeah. Apple, Facebook. So Microsoft is really huge. Yeah. Uh, so walk us through how you got that job. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Um, for me, I would always tell people that it wasn't something I expected this at this time of my life. <laughs> when I got like when I started actively coding, I'll tell my mom. I usually tell my mom that I'm going to work very hard after school so that I can work for like five years before Microsoft can employ me as an engineer. And God willing, it came literally before I was even done with school, right? And I think a lot of things that contributed to this it was the kind of people I had around my circle, the kind of exposure I had in the industry, and also the time I had started targeting these kind of companies. So there's something called the Microsoft Student Partners Program. In that community, I met two people that are currently like my closest friends now, and they also had the same aspirations as me well to, you know, work for international tech companies. So that was one. So once I got that exposure, I also attended an event from, I think, Women Who Code. They have, they're currently not functioning now. I think they've closed down. Yeah. So I attended an event from Women Who Code. And on that event, I saw <clears throat> students from the University of Lagos working at Google and Facebook. And they came to talk about how they got their jobs. And it made me wonder... If I'm thinking of working at a company like Microsoft, these are people that are working at other big tech companies. They didn't school at MIT. They didn't school at like University of Columbia or any university outside of Nigeria. They schooled at Nigerian universities and they were able to do this. So it made me believe that I could actually get this thing earlier than expected. So I was targeting new graduate roles. I was targeting companies that were absorbing graduates right from the university and like you mentioned microsoft meta amazon apple those were the kind of companies that were doing that at the time and i'm like okay this is one of the ways that i could go in as an entry-level software engineer so <clears throat> i started like you know fixing up my resume after that call i reached out to someone that spoke on that call and i asked her oh i see you're working at a big tech company i plan to work at microsoft by god's grace can you help me you know, review my resume and just tell me how I can go about it. So she reviewed my resume. In her words exactly, she she mentioned that my resume is more than entry level because of like the experience I gained as a student. And that was really good actually. So she reviewed my resume. I got to the Microsoft careers page. I got to start looking for, start looking for things that I can do. And so the things there this was while you were in school? Yeah, I was in my three hundred level. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So the things they were more concerned about was, we know that you're a student, we know that you're about graduating, but what have you built with your skills? Aside being a student, what other projects have you worked on that we can't see? So I'm like, okay, I need to start working on branding myself, positioning myself in that space. So prior to this um, moment, in my second year in school, I launched an app on Google Play Store. And it wasn't super hard for me to find projects to put on my resume because I already had a, had an Apple Play Store at the very, very young age. And that was like a win for me. So I added that to my portfolio. I also added like the experiences that I, leadership experience that I had in school as a computer science student. I added like my community engagement in school, you know, certifications, awards that I got. And yeah, in mind, I didn't really have any experience. I didn't have any work experience because I was still a student. So mm -hmm. I wanted to brand myself in such a way that, okay, they're seeing me as someone that doesn't have experience, but they've been able to see the things I've been able to do on my own without mm -hmm. like working on that someone. So my resume was good. My LinkedIn was on point. As much as I was a student, I made sure that I was updating like the few people that were following me on LinkedIn at that time with like things that I'm working on, things I'm building. I was also writing articles. So I think that was just basically it. I applied a couple of times and I didn't get like a referral or I didn't get like an acceptance. And I'm like, okay, even if I graduate from school and it's not Microsoft, I will definitely work somewhere else and come back to Microsoft. 
But towards the end of 2020, someone reached out to me on LinkedIn. She was a soft, she is a software engineer at Microsoft currently. And she said, oh, she's so, I see that you're a student. You've been posting a lot on LinkedIn about things that you've been learning. And Microsoft is hiring graduates at the moment. And I'd really love to refer you. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. So yeah, the moment she referred me, I got an email immediately that, oh, someone has just awesome. and would love to interview you. And so it was a full circle moment for me because prior to that referral, I've literally been working on every single thing, my resume, my technical interviewing skills, my data structures and algorithms. So that referral met me at the best point of, you know, my preparation. And it's one thing for someone to refer you and you go to your interviews and do rubbish. But it's another thing for them to refer you and you're ready. Like that person can vouch for you. So the interviews came in. I did like the usual data structures and algorithms. It was four rounds of intense interviewing and coding. But at the end of the day, I think three days, four days later, I got like an email saying, oh, congratulations, you've been accepted. I was like, <laughs> so this is more like a very dream finally come true. <laughs> So this is more like a very short version because in between everything that happened, there were a lot of like rejections. There were a lot of like disappointments. I had to take a step back for like a bit, but at the end of the day, everything mm. worked out fine. Wow. That is such an inspiring story. And there's a lot to <clears throat> unpack from your story. But yeah. I think one of the things that stood out for me it's was okay. your dream. Like right from when you were young, you just said, I want to work at Microsoft. It's so good for, like a young person to be able to dream, you know, right. dream outside your, in, like your immediate environment. And for you, you're just like, I want to work at Microsoft and everything just align. work together to get you exactly yeah. aligned to get you at right. Microsoft. So my question is what sparked that dream? Cause I know that the beginning oh. of great things is always a dream, okay. right? So what sparked that dream for you when you were still very young? Yeah, for me, I would say that usually when I'm talking about my tech journey, people would want to hear something like, oh, I started coding on my phone or my parents and all of that. Like those, those are yeah. the stories. Those, for, you. Yeah. <laughs> for me, it wasn't that. I, I got exposed to computers very early. Like I had an elder sister and my dad had like a computer set up in his office. And one day he just decided to replicate the same thing at home. Because we'll always go to his mm -hmm. office with his own computer. So um, he came back um, one day with like a desktop, a keyboard, a CPU, you know, the way, the, the way it was. That the whole, yeah, computer, <laughs> CPU, keyboard, yeah. No. With like the printer, the ink, the paper, the speakers. So, mm -hmm. so he got like a lesson, lesson computer tutor as well. And this, there's this, there was this Windows Vista manual that people used to like learn copies in that time. So mm. I was constantly using like the computer at home. I would surf the internet. I would print. But one thing that stood out for me was each time I log in, you know, when you want to log into like the OS, you would see like the Windows, the Microsoft yeah. Windows stuff pop yeah, up. I, yeah. So I would always tell my mom, I was, I was, what I was saying was, I was all for Windows, not Microsoft, because I didn't know that. Microsoft, okay. But I didn't know Microsoft at that time, but I knew Windows. Windows is something that I literally grew up with. So I'm like, oh, I'll talk for Windows. I'll talk for Windows as a computer person. I didn't know computer science or computer engineering that time. So, so yeah, I think that was what sparked the interest. And he gave me mm -hmm. direction looking for what to study, looking for what to study in school was a no brainer. It was either computer science or computer engineering and everything just sprouted like from Fine. that phase. I think mm -hmm. that phase of my life. Yeah. Oh, awesome. So what's your day to day schedule like at work as a software engineer at Microsoft? <laughs> yeah. <It's a> lot. <laughs> okay. It's a lot. Um, I think firstly is showing up first, showing up at work. Then I feel like it's the usual template for all software engineers. Like you do your stand up where you like give like the updates on what you did the previous day and what you're working on the current day. You also um, try to prioritize like deliverables that are more important because definitely the company is going somewhere. So you want to be working on things that are urgent for like shipping or your builds and all of that. 
So once you're done prioritizing, once I'm done prioritizing that, I start working immediately if I'm meant to communicate with my, because in a tech company, you're going to be working hand in hand with your PMs, you're going to be working hand in hand with stakeholders and your leaders as well. So, you know, just to <clears throat> communicate with these people to make sure that what you're doing is on track and you're not doing anything outside of the scope of the project. Go, yeah. And then, yeah. The other fun stuff. I mean, I think like it's in two ways. Either I'm in the office or I'm at home. So other things okay. is lunch, having lunch, catching up with my friends. If I'm at home, I watch TV. I'm at the office, I play games. Then I just come back and just retreat over the same thing. Over, over. The, okay. Yeah, on poor request, marriage request. And the most important thing is, or what fools me is the fact that I, I can see what I'm working on on billions of devices i can call my friends that are probably using like the os now i say oh can you check out this page I, yeah that's me that's me that built that so i think that's uh, what, nice uh, yeah that's what falls my um interest to know that what i'm doing is having like a global impact so that's a typical okay for typical week. day at work okay yeah. Nice. As someone that um, I, I think I've worked mostly remotely, so I kind of miss coming to the office, interacting <laughs> with people to some extent. Yeah. So hearing yeah, you say like, you know, you go to the office and actually do physical stand up. I think I'm so used to the virtual stand up. So just doing the physical stand up. I don't know how it will look like, but it definitely sounds interesting. Yeah. yeah. Do you prefer working from home or like working remote, working hybrid. physically at the office? Oop, hybrid, hybrid yeah. a mixture, right? Because okay. more, if you go to the, like, I, I think Lagos. So you don't have commuting in Lagos can be. So doing that every day in a week can can literally make you so exhausted. But those that don't know, commuting in Lagos is yeah. crazy. The traffic can <laughs> drive you crazy. <laughs> yeah. So I think a little bit of both, maybe twice a week. Okay. Just three times a week, the house. But just having a balance, but definitely not on site full time full time okay yeah that makes sense um i was going through your um events you attend lots of events and speak yeah. at lots of events and one of the ones you spoke at were recently was the oh. lsc event yeah. where you spoke about building a tech area yeah. in africa so throughout your experience as a software engineer in microsoft what are some of the lessons that you yeah. know, you've learned in order for people to build solid careers in tech yeah. in africa because yeah. there's this notion that when you're in africa or nigeria it can be a bit <laughs> limiting <laughs> so what are some of the lessons you've learned to build um, a successful career honestly a lot and the first thing for me will be mm -hmm. as big as you can like dream as big as you can i don't think there is any um, company that I'm really passionate about that I will say, okay, I want to work at this company and I will try my best to get to that company. Mm -hmm. I will definitely do that. So dream as big as you can because the tech industry is evolving so fast. So you don't want to have mediocre dreams or you don't want to have mediocre plans for your career. So you want to make sure that you're thinking big, you're dreaming big, and you're thinking about impact because that's the most important mm -hmm. thing. The industry is, I would say, is getting saturated, but people are doing a lot of things. So if you're not standing out with the impact that you want to make, maybe product or management or find or even founding a startup, you're going to get lost in like in the whole mix. So dream big and think impact all the time, not just doing the regular work. Other things would be have a sense of community. I think what is currently going to help people now in this industry is being in an active community yeah. if you want to go the oh i know what i'm doing i'm going to stay alone in my house in my little room and learn you're going to you're not going you're literally not going to go yeah, out you're going to struggle you're going yeah. to struggle a lot so mm -hmm. you need community you need people that you can ask oh what are you working on and the person can tell you okay i'm working on this with this this technologies and you're like oh okay i didn't even know this existed or i didn't even know that this has been outdated or this has faded out so it makes you stay like current with like the industry trends what is going on and when you're building with people that are doing the same thing that you're doing maybe beginner intermediate or advanced you get to learn more so that's what community gives you you're not paying to access any resource you're not paying to access people that are higher than you in your career you literally have a free um, playing field to make yourself a better like technologist or a better problem solver. 
Then other things would be, I know this is very controversial, but passion is also a thing that plays like a huge role because... Huge role, okay. I'm saying it's controversial because so many people, of course, there's, there's money in tech. I won't come here and say, okay, um, there's no money. <laughs> there's no money in tech because I know people yeah. that are making like, you know, thousands of dollars and, you know, they're making a living for themselves through that um, work. But as much as you want to focus on the money, to create impact, you need passion. Passion, right? yeah. Money can take you so far, but passion will take you farther. If you are passionate about a particular field, you can make you can solve more problems with that thing mm-hmm. that you're passionate about, right? So um, focus on what you really like doing. <clears throat> focus on what you're interested in. If you see a field in the world, not particularly tech, maybe fashion or even makeup, as a technologist, you can make impact in that area if you have if you're passionate about what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And there's this thing people are probably saying, oh. Um, this field is saturated. I'm not going to go into this field because it's saturated. I'm not going to go into this field because it doesn't pay well. Try to focus on you and yourself and know what's going on around you, right? Try to focus on growing in whatever you're doing. Even if that field is saturated, look for how you can stand out. If I keep 10 front-end engineers, there's no way that all of them will have the same qualifications. No, that's going to be one person that's better. And what makes that one person mm-hmm. that is like the way the person has, you know, built their cells, maybe the kind of projects they've worked on, the kind of exposure that they've had. So try to always stand out in any field and don't say, okay, it feels saturated. I think the last thing would be um, having like global exposure. If you're based in Nigeria, don't base your skill set and qualification by what the Nigerian market is saying. Okay, this is the highest qualification for this field. Go to the US, go to the UK, look at what people are building and ask yourself, am I building this or have I gotten to this level? And try to start learning for people globally, right? Try to be world class. Like, try to be world class. Try to make sure that whatever skills you're learning, whatever projects you're building can compete world class right so don't build things that are so regular and i mean people have done it before and you're just replicating you're just reinventing the wheels try to make sure that if they keep you and someone in the most likely the u.s or someone in you know in another continent you guys can compete on a global scale i'm not just like you know nigeria and africa so yeah. i think yeah those are a few tips that has mm-hmm. helped me and is currently still helping me at the moment those those are solid tips. I I like what you just said about the you know, thinking on a global okay. scale because yeah. as Nigerians or even Africans, it's easy for us to just constrain our mindsets yeah. to just feel like what we are doing right. is just for our local community yeah. right. and you feel like a local champion, but then you're not able to compete. Yeah. You're not able to compete yeah. with other people globally. But yeah. when you're able to think on a large scale, on a global scale, whether it's the projects you do or even the quality yeah. of work you do, you know that it can measure up with what you know other people see in other continents as well so yeah yeah, that's so good and even learning in public i think that was one of the things that helped me learning in public not being shy to share what you're learning at every phase it always yeah it always helps you so yeah those are really solid tips uh so do you read books do you read books um i'm trying to (laughs) So my to... next question was like, what's one book that you've read recently oh, or at any time that really inspired you? I think that would, for me, that would be Atomic Habits. Atomic yeah. like, By um, Peter something, right? I can't remember. Is it that Atomic Habits? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just know that. I think good. I actually started, I, I started <laughs> listening to it, the audio, but I haven't finished it. But yeah, oh, it was a really okay. good book. So okay. Yeah. Okay. I think what I did, okay. I just want to share one thing I learned from the book would right. be building, you know, systems around your life that actually work, right? So it's above building habits or <clears throat> being consistent with something. You're actually building systems mm-hmm. that are long term, things that can, you know, grow with you in your thirties and your forties and your fifties. Yeah. So yeah, systems over another thing consistency over motivation not doing things when mm. motivated but doing things consistently no matter how consistently small. yeah we'll give yeah. it thoughts here yeah. 
Yeah, I think I remember him talking about the systems and oh. when I was reading it or listening to it, it, it mentioned something like systems help you like replicate success, that kind yeah. of thing. It's yeah. easy to just dream that you want to be successful, but if you don't have a system, it's Expecting going to be very hard. Why? Okay, yeah, yeah, that's that's good. And you yourself, you're an author now. You say yeah. you released your first book Thank in 2022. You. Like, yes. So the name of the book, for those that don't know, is A Techie's Guide into Big Tech Companies. So um, Chisholm, what inspired you to even write this book? Because writing a book is a very formidable goal and it's not an easy task at all so <laughs> it must have required you to be very inspired and motivated so was, what's what inspired this book it was a lot i think i'll usually tell my friends that that was the hardest that is currently the hardest thing i understand and i've mm. done like in my entire life together <laughs> so it's mm. one of the hardest things but I think what, what inspired me was when I announced um, the two offers I got. So the first offer I got was an internship offer from Bank of America. And the second offer was from Microsoft. And when I announced these two offers, my social media literally exploded. You up, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was wild. Like LinkedIn wow. and, uh, and Instagram. People kept asking, oh, how did you do it? What did you study? Did you are you are you in Nigeria? Did you get it from Nigeria? And just you know questions like that. And I noticed that these questions were getting a lot. So I tried two things. The first thing I did was to do like a one on one thing where I just talked to people and you know explain these things. So when I started that one on one, I noticed that I was repeating myself over and over and over again to multiple people. So that didn't work. So I stopped that. I kept that on hold for a bit. So I'm like, okay, let me write like a medium article to just express shit on my journey, what I did, how I did it. And so when I was drafting out the table of content for this medium article, it was getting bigger and bigger and become like, no, 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 I can't write. This can't be an article. And I'm like, okay, this can actually work as a book because the content was a lot. And I haven't written a book before, so it was a huge, it was a huge challenge for me. And the book was just to answer those multiple questions I've been getting from people. So how do I position myself on LinkedIn? How do I prepare for data structures and algorithms? How do I negotiate my salary? How do I handle rejections? How do I find these jobs? Where do I find them? You know, those very common questions. And so I started writing and just to prove a point that you don't really need to maybe be a citizen of the US or maybe be a citizen of the UK. You can possibly access these opportunities as a Nigerian living in Nigeria. In so, Nigeria, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I also had to contact my friends working at other tech companies like Amazon, Meta, um, Twitter, Spotify. I'm like, okay, you guys are Nigerians. You guys schooled in Nigeria. Can you come and contribute to the book as well and just tell people your story and so that they can feel more involved to say, okay, these are people that look like me. These are people that went to the schools I went to and they're currently in the US and in Europe making impact in this company. So they contributed to the book as well. And I'm just really happy about the progress and growth. I'm, I get messages all the time. Oh, your book helped me get this internship. Your book helped me clean up my resume your book helped me understand like algorithm concepts better and yeah i think it, it's just getting started i mean this is just the beginning of the yeah, this is just the beginning yeah, yeah. It, you definitely built a system around you you know based on what you learned from yeah. the atomic habits because your book is like a system so that you don't keep repeating yourself over and over exactly. again i checked who yeah. with the book yeah. it's actually james um, player because i know i mentioned peter Peter and James were just in my head. Like, <laughs> Peter or James. Well, the it? name of the person is James Clare. <laughs> yeah, so um, as a woman in tech, you're gradually yeah. wrapping up. Um, what are some of the challenges you faced and how can the ecosystem be more welcoming to um, diversity employing women? Because there's this notion, I think sometime on Twitter one time, people were debating whether... Women engineers are better than men engineers. Yeah. You no, know, all those funny Twitter <laughs> drama going on. Yeah. So, how can how can the ecosystem be more welcoming of women? I think honestly, 
every year, every year I think that we're actually making progress with like these type of stereotypes. When I see tweets like this, like a start, I think when I see people seeing just make statements like this, and every year I celebrate International Women's Day, and it seems like we're getting closer to like the long. Not necessarily closing the gap, but a bit closer to like closing. Um, the- we are creating impact here. Yeah. Exactly. So when I still see statements like this, it worries me because a lot of people and a lot of NGOs are trying so hard to, you know, empower women, to make sure that women are in the positions they should be, and to make sure that these stereotypes are reduced. But we haven't gotten there yet, per se. And me personally, I don't think I've faced any sort of stereotypes as a lady like any serious stereotype like maybe at work or maybe on social media just a few but again i haven't faced any serious like stereotype for being a woman in tech but i know a couple of people that have been facing these things in their workplace maybe they're not getting promotions because they are ladies or they're not giving impactful projects to work on because they feel that they can't do it or the guys are better but at the end of the day, there's, there are NGOs that are currently working on these things, NGOs that are consistently empowering women, that she could Africa, that is yeah. WeTech, that is Cyber Girls, a lot of NGOs that are making sure women are giving like that level, you know, that level playing field to succeed in their tech career. So um, I'm proud to be a woman in tech. And when I see women in tech, in the engineering space, the management space, the IT support, yeah. anything at all, it makes me very proud. And I think everybody should play a part on their own to make sure that they're empowering people that are coming up after them. It might be through one-on-ones or even videos like this, like what you're doing now is creating an impact because you don't know the lady or the young girl that's going to watch this thing and, you know, hear us speak about things like this and feel inspired. So, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely very helpful. So if you're a woman, if you're a woman in tech or you're a woman and you're aspiring to be in tech, you know, our story should also inspire you and don't feel like you cannot achieve your dreams because other women have gone ahead of you and have achieved it's success. So it's yeah, you're, you're, you're not going to be alone. Okay, so what are some of the things that you do outside of tech, mm-hmm. outside of tech for fun? Mm-hmm. How do you relax You know, when you're not writing code? Um, I cook. I love cooking, actually. Oh, interesting. What's your favorite dish to cook? My favorite dish is... Okay, to cook or to eat. Yeah, to cook. To cook. (laughs) Okay. I think it would be the regular rice, like Chinese rice, turkey, also, yeah. That's my favorite dish. Interesting. So, as much as cooking is getting a bit stressful now, so I don't know if it's still a passion because it's getting a little bit stressful. (laughs) So, but yeah, cooking. I also love classical music. I play the violin. So, any- oh, that's interesting. Class- I didn't know that. <laughs> so, anything classical music, like calming music, like orchestra music, and all of that, it's something I really like as well. Interesting. I used to play the keyboard classical keyboard reading notes and all but it's been so long oh, yeah. i've been saying i want to buy a keyboard so you know i can just <laughs> play but that's probably something <laughs> that's probably something i'll do before the end of the year so i have a goal i'm working towards and as soon as i achieve it i've told myself that that's how i will reward myself yeah. with the keyboard so yes <laughs> that's not that's let's just see that's fair. Yeah, let's see. Okay, as we are gradually wrapping up now, what are, are there any interesting projects that you're working on that you'd like to share? Um, any interesting projects? I think I'm working on a few projects for, like, I do a lot of data engineering, so I handle big data a lot. So a couple of personal projects I'm doing is just, you know, building, like, ML workflows and, like, handling more, like, terabytes of data to build like pipelines and just basically knowing how to like architect data infrastructure personally like outside of my company then i'm also working on a book another book for um data engineers that want to like people that want to start their careers in data engineering so it's still still on the level but i mean i can always share (laughs) 
Yeah. yeah, I look forward to actually seeing it, you know, released and published. Okay, I know you also have a YouTube channel where you share yeah. lots of, you know, content for those that are looking to get yeah. started in tech, your journey as well. So I'm going to put that in the description box. Yeah, so Chisum, it yeah. has been so amazing having you share your story yeah. and just sharing lots of wisdom nuggets for, you know, those listening. Thank you so much. And I'm very excited to see your journey in the future. And yeah, keep making us proud. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thanks everyone for joining us and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Yeah.